profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan P Quinn Profiles. In our studio is artist, yes, artist. John Waters is a fine artist who has, for the last several years, exhibited his work all over Europe and various cities in the United States. But John Waters is known around the world as an author and film director. He's known to us as that, but in Baltimore, he's known as a native son. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Do, you, do you still live in Baltimore? I still live in Baltimore, and their <laughs> attitude there is you couldn't be that famous if you still live here. That's right. <laughs> Have you ever thought of leaving? No, I love it there. I have an apartment in New York, but I, Baltimore's my home. That's where I make movies. That's where I do my work, really, you know? And uh, recently, I was in Baltimore. I was on the phone in an airport, and I saw the two janitors looking and whispering and talking about me, and they came over and said, hey, is your name Barry? They thought it was Barry Levinson. <laughs> so it brought me right down to earth. You know, that that's why so I still live there. Now, you talk about <laughs> living in New York, but what about L.A.? This is the film capital. Yeah, but I come here. The only way I have what little power I have in the film business here is to come, and I'm only here for one week, and they either do my movie or don't. If they started running into me at parties, I'd be in real trouble. I think that's yeah. right, because I really <laughs> get out. never see you yeah. at parties. No, when they say yes, get out. Get out. You I know, see and you don't ask why. Yeah. <laughs> You see me in New York at parties. Exactly. You don't see me here too much. Well, do, so the creative juices really start running in Baltimore. Well, that's what I make movies about, about people, strange white people in Baltimore. You know, I don't make movies about fancy parties. I don't make movies about, you know, I make movies about how al the alarming people of Baltimore, which is still what inspires me the most. Well, I can't imagine that they love you so much then if you're really exposing all this. I'm not kind exposing of them because I look up to their eccentricities, uh. you know? I don't think I'm looking down at them all. I'm I'm putting bad taste on a mantle. That it's a freedom that I can never have. I always have to worry about taste. But if you really have bad taste, you don't care. And that's a freedom I envy. That's really great. And I think all those creative things and the people act like that is because they eat that spackle or scrap, <laughs> scrapple. Scrapple, not what spackle. <laughs> that's what you put on the wall. Some of them might eat that, too. Scrapple is an especially, <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, a, a meal they eat there. It's like mystery meat. It's <laughs> like the parts of the animals that are too repulsive to think of. They grind it all up and fry it in one piece. Some people love it. I, I'm not really a Scrapple fan. Did I your mother admit. make it? No, my mother did. Well, yes, when I was young, we had Scrapple. Yes, we did, actually. But, you, but that isn't what's made you the way you are. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> I, the early influence of Catholicism and Scrapple. Yes. <laughs> well, we want to read some of your filmography. All right. Uh, I'm going to go through. These are the things that you've directed and also written, because right. we know you're an actor as well. Oh, well. <laughs> that's one of my other hats, <laughs> low down on the list. Um, Mondo Trash Show in right. 1969, Multiple Maniacs, Pink Flamingos, Female Trouble, Polyester. Desperate and, Living, you forgot. Oh, Desperate Living. Yes, I did yeah. forget that. Did you write it? Oh, oh here, yes, Desperate, yes, living Desperate Living and living, Direct. Yeah. I have it. That was about the most hideous town you could live in in the world. When you're so embarrassed, you have to move there. That was the one that Divine was not in at the time, because Divine that's, was doing a play. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. I was going to ask you if Divine was in. Wait, let me finish. Polyester, did mm -hmm. I get to that? Uh, hairspray, Crybaby, and Serial Mom. Well, obviously, he couldn't be in Crybaby and Serial Mom because he was he, deceased. He was know, already but, gone, um, but he was in all of your movies? Yes, all of them except Desperate Living, yes. And you talk about Divine. Tell us a little. You went to school with Divine. Yeah, Divine. No, we didn't go to school, but he lived in the same neighborhood. He lived four, His parents lived four doors up the street from mine, and his parents had a nursery school, and he was the only child, and not the best <laughs> advertisement for one. Uh, but, you know, Divine in high school was hassled, really. Divine was not what divine, like what he became. He used all the anger he had from a high school and turned that into a style and fashion, really. And I think my early movies were really about his beauty and my mental illness put together. And I think it worked. I wrote vehicles for divine in the old days, certainly. 
you made him a star. Well, I, I Actually, think I did, certainly, yes. I'll take credit for that. And I think Divine was a star, and, and at first he didn't take it seriously. He didn't believe anything could come from these movies. I mean, this piece is really from one of my earliest movies, Mondo Trasho. And I used, to be, I used to be, in the old days, embarrassed about the technique of my early films, but now in the art world it pays off because we all know that out of focus, <laughs> badly exactly. framed, is really the mainstream of modern photography. And so it came in handy to re-photograph my early movies and the bad technique only paid off in the opposite way in, in doing these photographs. But it's interesting that you talk about that because we have Dennis Hopper who's right. used his films. We have right. all the directors and actors right. who are now going back. Well they're making art. movies. No that's the thing. All uh, the artists uh, want to make movies. I'm doing it ass backwards right, per usual. Right. Well that's right. The, yeah. um, the Cindy artists. Sherman and, all, and David Sally and all you know made movies. And um, I think I'm the only director that went backwards and tried to re... Because what, what I'm trying to do with these is, is what I do in film, certainly humor. I'm trying to redirect my own movies and other people's movies and put them together in a new way that I want them to be remembered, how I remember them, even if it wasn't the original director's... Um, what he meant, actually. Well, let's talk about this, uh, because Mondo Trasha was one of the first films. Certainly, my first feature-length movie. And you said and Divine was, was in his 20s? Yeah, Divine was about 23 here. And th this one is called Divine in Prayer. And in the, in the movie, Divine is praying for a miracle from the Virgin Mary in a laundromat. Now, um, <laughs> but I took another shot from another movie and put it in here. This was not in mine, but this, to me, I wanted to look like a bad Easter card, you know, like but God looking down. this reminded me, this was so in my mind, so today, because it shows Divine going up to heaven. Well, I'm yeah. sure he well, is no, I think in this, heaven's on, looking down on Divine, at this wanting time, him. Yes, but I'm yeah. thinking of Divine going up. Yes, so either I'm way, not, it's, a, it's <laughs> up and down. And, and, I, and I think this way he is looking up for Divine, you know, his name, Divine, if you really look it up, is a very Catholic word, and it's a very religious word. And um, I think it fits this piece very well. His divinity, in the literal sense of the word, is coming down from heaven, and he is looking up for guidance, to be trashier, to be filthier, and to be more religious at the same time. Did you make him feel all these things? Yes, was I he think I did. did yeah. Yeah. His name obviously was not divine, and when? he used to look it up in the dictionary and read what the real definition of divine was. And if you read the definition, it's very spiritual in our sense of the word. When divine started out, we kind of, the image was to have an insane Jane Mansfield. Which I would Which have is thought he, he was wanted, working on. He yeah. wanted to be a blonde Elizabeth Taylor. Well, he loved Elizabeth Taylor. In one piece I have called Doubles, it's two shots. It's one of Divine looking very much like Elizabeth Taylor, and another shot of Elizabeth Taylor with her hair in curler, so it looks like Elizabeth Taylor is getting in drag to be Divine instead of the other way around. Exactly. Yeah. And I used to always tell him, your nose is Elizabeth yeah. Taylor's nose. His legs were Elizabeth Taylor's <laughs> legs, too. And oh, you, know, you know, Divine never... even smoked Salem's because I she never did. I thought about yeah. that. Divine was our Elizabeth Taylor in my movies, uh, you know, and I mean that with utmost respect. I love Elizabeth Taylor. I, I'd love to make a movie with her. But Divine was our Elizabeth Taylor. She was the biggest star in our circles, and uh, Divine certainly was influenced very much by Elizabeth Taylor in the best sense of the word. Did you name him? Yes, I did. Because in he my was parents' Glenn? bedroom. His was name was Glenn, Glenn Milstead. Um, I never called him Glenn Milstead after you we never made movies. Did? Never. He didn't like it, really. Um, people that did. The only time people called him that, if they knew his real name, was from the old days that they were trying to needle him, you know uh, what I mean? Like, hey, Glenn, and like meaning your career is nothing. You aren't this person. Exactly. Uh, I mean, his mother called him that, you know? But I never called him Divi either, which a I lot of people did. Divi. I never did. I called him Divine, always, you yeah. know? I never called him Glenn, really, because to me, I'll tell you the day he ceased to become Glenn Milstead. We had made Mondo Trasho, Multiple Maniacs, and they wanted to fly him to San Francisco in drag. He got on the airplane in full drag with not one penny in his pocket and got off, and the coquettes met him in the airport. Oh, I remember. He became divine. He never went back to being that other person. I he remember. He never went back. I yeah. met him soon after that. Right. You were one of the major people that you put him up. You <laughs> took him into your home. You gave him a roof over his head. He slept in my house. And how he snored, that was very generous you because were... he could keep up the entire block from his you snoring. You knew that? I s what do you mean? Of course. You knew the snoring? You sit on an airplane with him. People go, oh, my God. He, he died from that, unfortunately, not being able to breathe properly in that his sleep. That was a real problem. Yeah. The first time he came into the house, it was right after he had been in San Francisco, he came in totally in drag right. in a purple tank top, I right. mean a purple tube dress, yeah, yeah. all done up. And I had very ten-year-old twin they start daughters. Crying? Right. No, they, yeah. they just kept staring at him and when he got up to leave they said, 
Mom, can he fit through the front door? Right, right. And not well, thinking she, he came in the front door. Yeah, but as you know, <laughs> Divine didn't go in drag ever, except when no. he was working or in a movie or anything. He had no desire to be a woman. He didn't want to sex, any of that. He, it was too much work. Well, it took that, him hours. To, and people would be shocked when they would see Divine as a man, because you know how he looked. He dressed like an insane garbage man, or Krishna, right. like gone crazy. Those wonderful, flowing. Garbage man right. outfit, sometimes with no eyebrows and lipstick stains, and his hair bleached white with a big, <laughs> giant diamond stud Which earring, people thought, what the hell is that? You know, it really scared people even more. Or walk around in his pajamas. Yeah. yeah. I always remember yeah, to the be pajamas. comfortable, yes. Now, you bring up this thing about Divine turning into uh, a star and mm -hmm. not wanting to really be a woman because mm -hmm. he wanted to be a great male lead. He was a character actor. Character think, actor. Yeah. Well, you have all these kind of skewed people who have become mainstream, like Pia Zadora, Ricky Lake. John, right. Was Do Johnny Depp kind of well? Johnny a Depp off then had time? been had been uh, in his show Twenty One Jump Street. He was a TV idol, teen idol, and he hated it. And I said, "Stick with us, we'll kill that." And we did, <laughs> and it worked for him. The only way you can ever get rid of an image you don't like is to is to play it and make fun of it. Tracy Lords did that with me. Tracy Lords, and uh, I was it say, works. Patty Zadora. Hurst, Patty you know, Hurst, same thing. It, it changes if you make fun of it. You know, drag queens hated Divine when it first came out, because drag queens were square in the old days, really square. They wanted to be their mother. They wanted the mink coat and a tiara. You know, Divine wanted a chainsaw. <laughs> but that was what was great, and it had to be some kind of influence that you had as well, because he was, I think, a fabulous actor. Yeah, he and was. And he was totally yeah. directed by what you did. And he started out playing a uh, your worst nightmare and ended up playing a loving mother, which is a very good stretch, especially if you're a man. But he had those wonderful Tommy Nutter suits yeah. that he had made in London, and he, he would have played a man. He played a man in my movie twice before. You know, he had a scene where he had sex with himself, where we filmed it all one <laughs> right. way with Divine dressed as a man with a double. Then he shaved everything off, did it the whole other way, and he was like, "Go blank yourself." You know, literally, he did. Exactly. But then he was telling me, "I'm going to be like the Sydney Green Street yeah. of the film." He films. could have been. He could, well, the day before he died, he was going to be on Married with Children, playing a man the next day. So he his career was headed. He would have played the dog in Pink Flamingos if I had let him. But John, if he had switched over no, and he gone be, I think both he mainstream, yeah. would you have directed him then in those oh, kind well, of sure, things? Oh, sure. We had already were moving in that direction. Certainly, uh, Polyester was the first movie I made not to be a midnight movie. Hairspray was certainly the the amazing thing is Hairspray is a giant rental still for children's birthday parties, and they have is no it, idea he's a he's a man. It's not part of the plot. Never in my movies then was it revealed Divine was a woman. That wasn't it. Divine was an actor who happened to play a woman or a man or whatever in my movies. But they say that the larger your budget, the more mainstream it got. The less your budget, the more bizarre well, it was. Well, that goes, that's fairly <laughs> obvious, you know. I mean, that's not something that's so <laughs> shocking, is it? I mean, uh, basically, also, uh, when I was 20 years old, I, I made a movie, Pink Flamingos, that I see now when it was released again. It's even ruder than it ever was. But it was that incredible rage that was in it. And Divine had that rage. You could see him almost literally having a fit on film, literally. How did you have that, the gall, Really, to make something so on the edge. Now filmmakers are doing yeah. that, and they're all well, filmmakers still do it when you're young. You're on the edge. <laughs> Basically, to me, it was like committing a crime when we did that movie. It wasn't like taking a part. It was joining up to commit a crime, a social crime that we were on in, a, an act of cultural terrorism in a humorous way. It was during the Yippies and Abby Hoffman and all that kind of stuff. The real influence was the Weathermen. You know, now oh, not right. on uh, not on Divine. I used to make him go to riots, and he, <laughs> he didn't know what to do. He was like not running from the police or yelling about <laughs> Vietnam. He didn't know one thing about that. But he, he didn't care. Either, he didn't did he care. Now. You know, and he he was not a hippie at all. He didn't understand <laughs> it. You know, he tried to be a mod, but that didn't work very well. So but then he just became an insane garbage man. His look was really good. He wore one piece like uniforms. Oh right, I remember that. And uh, it was a good look. It, it, it terrorized people. Actually. Well, we talk about filmmaking. Did you go to college? Did you go to film school? No, I got expelled from NYU, actually. And I've been back to lecture three times, which makes my mother very, very happy. Are they going to give you an honorary degree? No, it degree? wasn't NYU's <laughs> fault, really. Because I, I just wanted to go, the kind of movies I wanted to make then, they would never have let me make. Now, you could make those movies. Then, you couldn't. It's in a different context. I mean, like, the same way this is. The same way this is coming back from one thing from 25 years ago. Now, it's in a completely different context, but it works in a different way. So you are actually um, 
demonstrating, lecturing at film schools. I, oh yeah, I have for 30 years. I used to do it and bring Divine, and we'd come out and I'd say, I'd like to introduce the most beautiful woman in the world, and Divine would come out pushing a shopping cart and throwing dead mackerels into the audience. <laughs> now today, people wear their clothes, they'd get furious if they had on a Chanel suit and a dead mackerel hit them. In the old days, they didn't care, they threw it back. But that, that's the thing, you just went out and did it. It was the only way we could promote it. We didn't have money. We, you know, it was the only way we could get people to see the movie was to make my friend a star in, the, in, the, in a joke on the star system. Certainly I didn't have the money to go hire Jane Mansfield, no. so I made my own version exactly. and screwed it a little. I'm going to show a little bit. I have okay. a, a very short clip from Pink Flamingo so right. they, we can know about Divine, okay. see him on right. the screen. But you also have a very funny Edie the Edith Egg Massey, Lady. Edith yeah, who's Edie the Egg Lady in Pink Flamingos. Who, and uh, someone else. Was my version of Baby Doll in a way. You know, Baby Doll in the crib sucking her thumb, that famous image. Carol well, Bright. this is much more alarming, I think. And we have someone else in this scene. Uh, Mary Vivian Pierce, who plays um, Divine's traveling companion in the movie. Okay. Who is a voyeuristic, um, completely a voyeuristic, whose boyfriend she likes to watch having sex, committing crimes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's go to the Pink Flamingos. It's 10.30, Babs, Babs, why isn't the egg man here? I'm starving to death for some eggs. Please, Babs, come in and give me some eggs. I'm coming, Mama, I'm coming. You can hold on. Cotton, cotton, Babs won't give me my eggs. Cotton, please come in here and give me my eggs. Be in a minute, Edie, don't you worry, I'll fry you up some, honey. Eggs! 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 Good morning, Mama. I bet you're hungry. Oh, Babs, I'm starving to death. Hasn't that egg man come yet? I love that egg man so much. Well, Edie looked like could have been his mother. She did, I know. And, and Edie, Divine loved her, but Edie drove Divine crazy because sometimes it took like 30 takes for her to get the dialogue right. How you know? did you do the makeup? Well, Van Smith did all the makeup then, certainly in a very alarming look. You know, we I just told Van, do something weird with Divine's hairline. And he shaved it back because there was really not enough room on the human face for the eyebrows we had in mind. Ah, right. that's what it was. Yeah. Well. We're going to take a break. Okay. We'll be right back with John Waters, and we're going to talk about some of his art because I've written down some of the things that he has on the wall at the Pace Gallery. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and we're back with director, actor, artist John Waters. The words Mondo Bizarro were meant for his films. What's Mondo Bizarro is that. They've been around, and we've watched them for the last 30 years, and they're still fabulous. <laughs> they're you. still Thank bizarro. You. They haven't mellowed up in those old cans in the attic. No, right? and you yeah. know, they say, oh, John Waters, we know who he is. He's an overnight success. 30 <laughs> years? <laughs> really? I made the first movie in 1964. That's 33 years ago. Right. So it's not exactly overnight. Right. But you know, you've, you've had this long career of yeah. fame. And each time it's gotten a little better. So yeah, it's, it's been very gradual. It keeps you right down to earth. <laughs> one, of the, one of the really almost mainstream films was Hairspray. Certainly. Uh, I may accidentally made a family movie. <laughs> Is that what it was? <laughs> and it was the only way to shock anybody at that point was to make a PG movie. People couldn't believe there was a PG John Waters movie. So we're going to see a little bit of okay. Divine yes, and Divine. Ricky Lake dancing. Yes, and Ricky Lake had just, this is her first movie, she had just been turned down for a job at The Gap. It's Is true. that right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's see that. Hairspray. Penny, your mother called. Tracy Turnblad, can't you say hello to Mrs. Malinsky? Mm -hmm. Every day she's got to watch that corny Collins show. Delinquents, if you ask me. It ain't right to be dancing on TV to that colored music. She's just a teenager. Huh. Goodbye, Mrs. Malinsky. Goodbye, Edna.
Could you turn that racket down? I'm trying to iron in here. Ironing was not Ironing. one of my favorite right. things. I like to sweep. But I remember Divine, the first day on the set, when I saw him in that outfit, I didn't recognize him. I thought he was really one of the neighbors that lived in the neighborhood where we shot. And he said to me, no one can ever call me a drag queen. What drag queen would allow themselves to look like this? <laughs> that was a character actor. That was right? really yeah. good, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. He really looked, and the, the neighborhood women that lived there all said to him, hi. They just thought he was one of them. Swat they along. had no idea. Yeah. I always imagined this scene with the bandana on, because it looked like that was the next thing he should have. <laughs> well, maybe if he went gun. out, you know. I mean, or to wrapping his hair in toilet paper. That's what the women did when they had teased hair. And later in the movie, when he finds his new look, which is teased hair, the mother gets her hair all teased up, she does wrap toilet paper in it every night to go to sleep. To hold it up, yes, yeah. I remember that. Now. You've had art shows, and yes. I went. I, I saw the show in New York, right. and I saw the show in L.A., right. and the one thing, I think you're a TV addict. No, I've never watched, I don't even watch TV ever. I can't you believe know? it, it looks like it's, everything's no. photographed from the oh, screen. Oh, it is, it is, but it's not about photography, my work, it's about editing. <laughs> No. I can't believe it. It's what I try to do is take movies and redirect them, do them the way I think they should be, like in storyboards, or put two different images from other, take other images from films and make it into a new narrative so it all turns into a John Waters movie, no matter uh -huh. what it was before. But the one in New York was a little different than the show here. Well, it was different work. Some's the same, you know. Um, I've had two shows in New York, actually, at American Fine Arts Gallery. And um, basically, uh, what's in the show here, there's some new work, but some of it is from both those shows. You, you only saw the second one, I think. So, yeah. so you just put a video, you put a movie on. Oh, it's snap. certainly, yeah, but then they're taken in different ways. They're blurred or they're taken in close-ups or they're taken different right. ways. It's always reshot. It's like redirected. The one thing is that facelift of Elizabeth Taylor's. Yeah. We've been talking about Elizabeth Taylor well, all Well, she turns day. into me in the piece. That's you what know? I mean. Basically you... because her stitches in the operation look like my mustache. So I picked up on that and just took shots of her stitches through this movie where she got a facelift, but changed it so the narrative is she turns into me, actually. So it's like several... They're like movies. They're, you, you have to read them. And that one was so big it goes around two walls. That was my epic, you know, too big for one wall. This is also great. Um, there's one piece that has directors' names. Bresson, Bergman, Buñuel, oh. Antonioni, Fellini, and Kleiser. Well, Randall Kleiser, <laughs> who I like too. He made Grease and Summer Lovers and I mean, movies so I like. Well, because that, it's called Reputation, that piece, and it's about, it depends who you're sitting with, how great you are. If you worked in a restaurant and those were all sitting at a table, I must admit, as much as I love Randall, I might pay a little more attention to Buñuel. I think but, so. And, and the funniest thing was, Randall Kleiser bought the piece, which I loved. I oh. thought it was really great. But you know, what they are is just the, the, just the credits, names. credits yeah, from credits names. a movie. Yes, 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 certainly. So Put all it, and sometimes I, I, I make my own credits, you know, like for oh, like ones I, I did, like that. Movie Star Junkie, which is just close-ups of tracks of I actors saw, playing right. junkies. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty hard. <laughs> the Liberace one. Well, it's just a, a picture of his empty piano, because I miss him. It's my corniest one. It's my most kind of, the most melodramatic one. It's just Liberace's name and an empty piano which says it all to me. We miss him. So where did you get the Liberace name? Was it on well, a... from one credit from one of the movies oh, somewhere, you know, I and see. then you find an empty piano. What you do is take endless shots and then put them together like it's a frame of film. Were you and then put them sometimes, of yes. Of your on artwork at that time? In the did very you? beginning, I did it because I wanted a still that I didn't have from one of my own movies. That's how it That's started. What I see. And uh, there was a moment in Multiple Maniacs right before Divine, right after he's raped, and right before the infant of Prague, a religious saint appears to him. <laughs> One second where I think he truly was divine. And I didn't have that still. So I went back and endlessly tried to take pictures of it off the TV screen, and it finally worked. And then that's how I started doing it. That's why I thought yeah. you were a TV junkie, because I thought no, you I watched never watched these TV, movies on except TV. Except porno and war. Right. You know, if we have war, I turn it on. You, you know. have the other one, the Jackie Kennedy story that Divine well, that's, plays. We did that for real in 1966, where we filmed the entire Kennedy assassination with Divine playing Jackie crawling over the trunk of the car, I and mean, people really didn't think it was funny. It was two years after it happened. But I took that film, which was not so good, and rephotographed it today and turned it into a photo piece, which, and it's called it Zabruder, because uh -huh. it looks like the Zabruder tape. It really looks real, only it, it does, is divine. It, yeah. do, it does, and divine looks great in that. The other one that I loved was Don Knotts turns into John Well, Waters. that's called self-portrait. That's about my low <laughs> self-esteem. You know, I sometimes pretend I'm Don Knotts all day long. How 
how do you go? <laughs> Easy. Get I done. wake up and pretend I'm Don Knotts. <laughs> and, and that's how you just took all these different photos I've of Don Knotts. But then there's one where it's blurred and then it turns me. That's him turning into me, which is how I feel as I get out of bed and start being and get into my business. That's how I feel like every day. I wake up as Don Knotts <laughs> and go to sleep as John Waters. And but every like, day I have to turn into that. And it takes sometimes an hour, sometimes a minute. It depends on my mood. But you wake up at 6.30, you said. Every morning at 6.30, feeling very much like Don Knotts. Uh, now yeah. that I can understand. That's a little dreary, right? <laughs> Droopy. The other one, I think he's cute, Don Knotts. <laughs> the other one that I thought was great was these eight bosoms of women. Oh, no, that was about, it's called Mink Stole. That's a different thing. It's just one picture of Mink Stole's face, and then all the rest of them are real Mink Stoles from oh, a movie. Mink they're Mink Stoles. I thought they were bosoms. No, well, they're bosoms because <laughs> I cut off all their heads. I only wanted to see the Mink, the close-up. I only wanted to see the Mink coat, not who was wearing it. The only ah. one that was important to me was the real Mink Stole. Well, there was five photos of Alan Smithers. Alan Smithy, you know, that's oh, the Smithy. that's the name that you get on the um, that's the so directed by Alan Smithy. That's if you have a fight and and the, the writers guild or the directors guild and take your name off a movie. So uh -huh. I photographed the credit of every one of those movies, imagining the scene behind it, how innocent that real director was that day filming that scene, not knowing what hell was going to happen in the editing room. Oh, that's right. So that's that why really it's called is despair. That an piece, idol, yeah. kind of. Well, an it's idol the worst thing that could happen to you, you know. And uh, there's never really been a good Alan Smithy movie. Is you know, always, I never knew yeah, that. Yeah. So you always learn something every minute. And if you were able to do something else, you've acted, you've directed, you've written, you've, you're now an artist, mm -hmm. what haven't you done that you would like to do? Juggle. <laughs> I'd really like to <laughs> learn to juggle. And then I would quit everything and just open in Vegas for Siegfried and Royd or whatever their name are. <laughs> you juggle yeah, their animals. Yeah. Or tumbling act, I are might you, like to do. Are you uh, working on anything else? Yeah, I have a new movie I'm shooting in the fall called Pecker. Oh, Pecker. Yeah. Is it a clean movie? <laughs> yes, he picked it as food as a child. <laughs> I see. Uh, you also have a website. I didn't we, know. I have nothing to do with that. They always try to get me to do one. I'm mechanically challenged. I wonder if I never you look did at that. them. No, I, I, it makes me nervous. I can't. Electricity makes me nervous. I, I've written all my books and movies longhand on legal pads with big pens. I can't even type. Is that right? Yeah. So you don't use the computer. You well, I, when it, I have a first draft, my assistant puts it in there, but I don't know how to look at it. I mean, to print it out eventually, yes. But um, no, I, I'm mechanically challenged. The other thing we have these. LAI works. You're the these only fans person. I had never seen. No, Lou Reed did it twice too. Did he? And it yeah. says, you know, LAI works fan club. And this is I the didn't John even Waters see them too. They look like club. the cheap like things you get in church in the summer in a Pentecostal church Couldn't in the fifties. Right, right. Right. Yes, Wait, I could. Divine prayed very well. You see, he really looks religious <laughs> here. He's almost all his features fade out even from <laughs> being so reverent. Well, I'm glad we had your fans. I'm glad we had your artwork. Yes, I'm the only glad way I can still work you. with Divine. Yes. See? Yeah. Thanks, John. Thanks very much, John, thanks for, for having being me. With us. And thanks for putting Divine up in the early days. It helped him, him a lot. Oh, it was always our pleasure. <laughs> our whole family loved him like one of ours. <laughs> Don't forget, keep writing. Um, 777 Figueroa, 40th floor. And if John Waters will put me in a movie, maybe we can run those clips on this show. <laughs> See you next time.